All right, so for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove the thermal compound from your heat sink and from your CPU, which is right now underneath the heat sink. And so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the old heat sink from the CPU. And this is an AM3 Plus socket, so I have myself grounded here so I don't destroy any components. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lift this lever right here that locks it down. So now it's unlocking the heat sink from the motherboard. Then you're going to want to unlatch it. So I'm going to push down and try and pull it out. So let's see, a little bit of finagling. There we go. And then you're just going to want to twist it a little bit. Now that it's unlatched, to try and unseat it from the CPU, pulling up gently. It'll take a little bit of force but it shouldn't take a whole lot. And let's see, it's not coming out too easily. It seems to be stuck. Huh. So you want to be very careful because you don't want to end up pulling out your uh, CPU with it. Because that would be very bad for the system. There we go. Oop. Good thermal compound, just had it attached pretty well. And one thing I didn't mention is that you want to uh, run your computer a little bit before you do this so that it heats up and so the thermal compound's a little looser, which is what I did earlier. And now to remove the CPU, since this is an AM3 Plus socket, and I have no idea how Intel's work, you have a little lever right here. Yeah, flip it up this way. You hear the little click, it unlocked. And when I put the CPU down, I'm going to put it inside this, which is what an older CPU that I bought came with got this nice padding stuff to put on so I protect the pins. That's what I'm going to use. And like I said before, I'm going to ground myself so I don't destroy a perfectly good CPU. And there we go. CPU's out. Got all the pins there. Now put it inside this protective casing so I don't bend the pins. And now the next part of the video is going to be showing you guys how to remove the thermal compound, so stick with me. Alright, so here I'm going to show you guys how to remove the thermal compound. What you're going to need is you're going to need some of these, uh, well actually you don't need these, but this is what I use, these ear tip cleaners. And then you want some uh, paper towels to help wipe it down too as well, but this is what you're mostly going to need. And then you're also going to want some rubbing alcohol. Now you could use some specialty stuff from the store or from Amazon or whatever, but why go order something extra you don't need when you can just go raid your medical cabinet to help you out. So what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to open this up. I'm just going to slide the CPU out of the way. You're going to dip this in. Clean tip in, don't re-dip after. Don't touch the thermal paste, then dip it back in because you'll contaminate the whole darn bottle. But what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to dip it in. Make sure it's not dripping. Well, actually for the heat sink it doesn't matter as much, but when you go to the CPU, I'd make sure it's not dripping. And then you're going to want to just basically coat as much of it as you can and just let that thermal compound work its way off. Now, if you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's sort of ridged up along the edges here. That's because I put too much thermal compound on before, but it wasn't hurting the system too much. It was just a little too much. So you don't need a whole lot of thermal compound when you want to reapply it. And you're just going to swirl this around. You're going to start seeing a lot of that thermal compound come off. And I'm just going to, oops, see if I can get this edge part. Just because there's a lot of this thermal compound on here. Alright, since I'm a little impatient, I'm going to take a napkin and try and get off as much as I can. Now keep in mind, this is your heat sink, so you can be a little more rough with it. Just try not, to, just make sure you don't end up scratching it. That's the main thing. For the CPU, I'll be much more careful. All right, so made a lot of progress, got a lot of the thermal paste off. So let's see if I can get some more of it off. Just swirling motions. Just try and work it in there. Oops, went over a little too far. And there you go, you see it really starting to come off now? That's what you want to see. Just this thermal compound just sliding its way off. 
There you go. Now I'm not going to do this uh, too thoroughly just because I'm not going to be reusing this heat sink. The reason why I'm removing this heat sink is because it's the stock. Even though it cools pretty well for this FX6350, it's a little too loud for my taste. So I could work it more, I could get more of it off, but the main thing I want to work on is getting the CPU cooler ready to go. And I'm just going to make sure that I don't have any static on me, so I'm just going to discharge myself real quick and right back. Now, now this one I'm going to be a bit more delicate on just because it is a $130 CPU. I'm not saying it's super expensive, but I'm saying I don't want to spend another 130 bucks. And so, make sure it's not dripping. Let's go ahead and apply it. Just try and get as much of it off as you can. And one thing you also want to note, once you've got this thermal compound off, you're going to wipe it. You're going to want to make sure that you get all this uh, rubbing alcohol off. Because otherwise it could compromise the next layer of thermal compound you put on it. But right now, we'll just focus on getting this thermal compound off. I don't know if you can see that too well, but this is actually getting the thermal compound off pretty well. It's almost the same color as the Q-tip though, so it's a little hard to see. So this is going to be the procedure just for getting the thermal compound off. Just work your way through it. So you get as much off as you can. Like I said, just be careful during this part, just make sure you're not bending the pin so put it on something that'll help either cushion it or just be certain not to apply too much pressure and move it around. And so that's going to be the steps for removing the thermal compound from your CPU cooler. And just keep working at it, I'm not going to show you all the way through because it's going to be the same procedure until you cleared off as much of the thermal compound as possible. And then once you are satisfied with it, then you're ready to uh, apply more thermal compound and attach a CPU cooler. Alright, thanks for watching the video and I hope it helped you out.